So after we have performed the optimality test, we now move to step number six, which is to iterate towards optimal solution. So in the previous step, we determined that the basic initial feasible solution is not the optimal solution as we have positive values for the row CJ minus ZJ. Now we need to observe the values of CJ minus ZJ and mark the column which has the highest positive value. So the variable in that column is the entering variable and this column will become our key column. Now in case we had two columns with the same value of CJ minus ZJ then we can choose any one arbitrarily. Now next we need to find the departing variable or the variable which will be replaced by x2. So this is our entering variable. So this variable has to replace one of these three variables. So we need to find out which one needs to be replaced. So in order to do that, we need to calculate the value of another column, which is theta. This is found by dividing the values in column B by the corresponding values in the key column. And this theta is known as the replacement ratio column. So 36 divided by 3, which is 12. 50 divided by 2, which is 25. And 60 divided by 6, which is 10. Now these ratios indicate the number of units of a variable that can be produced by trading all of the current level of basic variables. So if we give up all the values of these three variables s1, s2 and s3 then how much of x2 can be produced. This concept has been explained in detail in the video for step number six but let's quickly look at this to understand. So the first row is nothing but the first constraint which is 3x1 plus 3x2 plus s1 is equal to 36. Now x1 is 0 and x2 is also 0 so s1 the value was 36 that is what we have here 36 s1 is equal to 36. Now if s1 became 0 and x2 is the entering variable so how many x2's can be produced if s1 becomes 0. So we'll omit x1 because that is not being considered here. So 3x2 plus s1 is equal to 36. s1 becomes 0. So 3x2 is equal to 36 or x2 is equal to 36 by 3 which is 12. So in 36 hours Basically, we are saying that 12 x2s or 12 tables can be produced if s1 does not consume any of the time. Similarly, we have found for s2 and s3. Now, the row containing the minimum non-negative ratio is marked. So, this is the minimum non-negative ratio. So, this becomes our key row and this variable becomes our departing variable. So basically what we're saying is that S3 or this equation, the third constraint gives us the least number of tables to be produced. So if we gave up S3, then the entire time with which it was consuming, which is 60 hours will now help us produce only 10 tables and this is the least so we'll remove s3 from the solution so we know the key column and the key row and the intersecting element is known as the key element 
Now after we have selected the key column and the key row, a revised simplex table providing an improved solution can be developed. So the first step is that the incoming variable now replaces the departing variable and the coefficient of the incoming variable in the objective function is entered in the CB column. So let's do that. So here we'll place x2 which is the entering variable and corresponding we'll place the coefficient of x2 in the objective function. So x2 this is 30 is the coefficient so 30 comes here. Now all the other elements in this row are replaced by new elements which are obtained by dividing all the elements by the key element which is 6. So basically the idea is that we'll make this as 1. So in order to do that we have to divide this number by 6 which means that we have to divide all the numbers by 6 because eventually this is an equation right. So uh, 2x1 plus 6x2 plus 0s1 plus 0s2 plus 1s3 is equal to 60. So if we have to make one number as divided by 6 or if we have to divide one number by 6 we have to divide the entire left hand side as well as the right hand side by 6. So this will become 2 by 6 which is 1 by 3. This will become 1. This will become 0 0 and 1 divided by 6 so 1 by 6 and 60 divided by 6 which is 10. So let me replace this row with the new numbers. So here as you can see I have replaced this row with the new numbers that we had found. I have also removed the values of zj and cj minus zj because now we are obtaining a new solution and we will again have to recalculate these numbers. Also I have removed the values of theta because again we will have to calculate later on if required. Now we have replaced this row for x2 with the new numbers. Now each remaining row of the previous matrix is substituted by new row called replaced row. And in order to do that first the variable in this case it will be S2 and its contribution that is the CB column element are reproduced without change so this will be as it is. All other elements in the row are substituted by new elements. Now how do we find that new element for each of these numbers? So the idea is that whatever is the entering variable should have ones and zeros. So we already have one as the key element and the remaining should be zero. So we have to make this number zero. Let's take first let's take row S2. So we have to make this number zero in such a way that there is a multiple which we find out for multiplication with the key element, the new key element which is 1 and then we subtract it from this element which is 2 such that this becomes 0. In other words, we have to subtract a multiple of the reduced key element from the element in this row. So what this means is we have to find 2 which is this minus key element which is 1 multiplied by x is equal to 0. We have to find this multiple. So 2 minus x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 2. Now when we do this for one element in this other row, we have to do the same for all elements in this row S2. However, we have to do that with the corresponding element in the key row. So let's take the first column. So what this means is 5 
which is this element here, minus 1 by 3, which is the element in row x2, into the multiple that we found, which is 2. So this becomes 5 minus 2 by 3. 3 is LCM. So 5 is a 15 minus 2, which is 13 by 3. So this becomes 13 by 3. This becomes 0. Now 0 multiplied by 2 is 0. And 0 minus 0 is 0. So this will remain as it is. 0 multiplied by 2 is 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1. So this will remain as it is. 1 by 6 multiplied by 2 is 1 by 3. So this becomes 0 minus 1 by 6 multiplied by 2. So this becomes minus 1 by 3. So minus 1 by 3. And 10 multiplied by 2, which is 20. 50 minus 20 is 30. So this becomes 30. So let me replace this row with the new numbers that we have found. Alright, so I have replaced this row S2 with the new elements that we had found. And as you can see, this element here in X2 column and S2 row is now become 0. We have to do the same thing for the next row, which is S1. So we have to make this element as 0 by subtracting a multiple of the new key element from this element in the other row. So basically 1 multiplied by x and this has to sub be subtracted from 3. So 3 minus and this should be equal to 0. So 3 minus x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 3. So this has to become 0 and the multiple is 3. So 1 by 3 multiplied by 3 and that we have to subtract from this 3. So 3 minus 1 by 3 multiplied by 3 is the multiple 3 minus 1 which is equal to 2. So this becomes 2. Now 0 multiplied by 3 is 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1. So this will remain as it is. 0 multiplied by 3 is 0 and 0 minus 0 is 0 so this remains as it is. 1 by 6 multiplied by 3 is 1 by 2 and this is 0 here. So 0 minus 1 by 6 multiplied by 3 so 3 2 is a 6 so this becomes minus 1 by 2. So this is minus 1 by 2 now 10 multiplied by 3 is 30 and 36 minus 30 is 6. So let me replace this row with the new numbers. So this is our revised new solution. Now let's proceed to step number 7 where we will have to repeat step number 5 and 6 until we obtain the optimal solution. So in the last step, we have improved the solution. Now we have to find out whether this solution is optimal or not. So let's first find the value of zj. So 0 multiplied by 2 is 0. 0 multiplied by 30 by 3 is 0. 30 multiplied by 1 by 3 is 10. 0 multiplied by 0 is 0. 0 multiplied by 0 is 0. 30 multiplied by 1 is 30. 0 multiplied by 1 is 0, 0 multiplied by 0 is 0, 30 multiplied by 0 is 0, so this is 0. 0 multiplied by 0 is 0, 0 into 1 is 0, 30 into 0 is 0. This is 0, 0, 30 multiplied by 1 by 6 is 5. 0, 0, 30 multiplied by 10 is 300. So basically currently the value of profit with these as the solution 
is 300. Now let's find the net evaluation or the net profit for adding a unit of variable in the solution. So CJ minus ZJ, 20 minus 10 is 10, 30 minus 30 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 5 is minus 5. So here again we have a positive value which means that there is further scope for improvement. So this becomes our key column. X1 becomes our entering variable. Now we have to find the departing variable. So we need to find the value of theta. So the value of theta can be found out by dividing the values in column B with the corresponding values in the key column. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 30 divided by 13 by 3. 30 divided by 13 by 3 which is equal to 30 into 3 divided by 13 which is equal to 90 by 13. So this is 90 by 13 and 10 divided by 1 by 3 this is equal to 10 multiplied by 3 which is equal to 30 so here the lowest element is 3 so this becomes our key row and the intersection of key row and key column is this number 2 here also, since this row is the key row, S1 becomes our departing variable. So now after identifying the key column and key row, a revised simplex table providing an improved solution can be developed. So first, the incoming variable or the entering variable now replaces the departing variable and the coefficient of the incoming variable in the objective function is entered in the corresponding CB column. So let's do that. So this becomes x1 because x1 is the entering variable and the coefficient for x1 is 20. Now we know that 2 is the key element so let's mark this. Now next the incoming variable should appear in the key row which is this one with unit coefficient that means we have to make this as 1. Now how can we make this as 1 is divide this number by itself so 2 divided by 2. Now since we are dividing this by 2 we have to divide all the numbers in this row by 2. So let's do that. So this becomes 1, this becomes 0, 1 by 2, 0, minus 1 by 4 and this becomes 3. Let me replace these numbers. Now each remaining row of the previous matrix that is S2 and X2 is substituted by new row called replaced row and how we have to do that is first the variable and its contribution that is the CB column element are written as it is so these will remain as it is all other elements in the row are replaced by new elements so let's first take the case of S2 row now the idea on the whole is that this column x1 should have 1 and zeros. So 1 is at the place of key element and the remaining should be zeros. So we have to make these values as 0 by subtracting a multiple of the reduced key element from the element in these rows. So basically what we have to do is 13 by 3 which is this value here minus the reduced key element which is 1 
into x is equal to 0. So 13 by 3 minus x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 13 by 3. So this is the multiple. Now what this becomes is 13 by 3 minus 1 into 13 by 3 and this becomes 13 by 3 minus 13 by 3 which is equal to 0. So this becomes 0. Similarly we have to do the same thing for each of the columns. However the multiple remains the same which is 13 by 3. So 0 multiplied by 13 by 3 is 0. So this remains as it is. 1 by 2 multiplied by 13 by 3 and this has to be subtracted from 0. So this is equal to 0 minus 13 by 6 which is equal to minus 13 by 6. So this value becomes minus 13 by 6. For S2 0 multiplied by 13 by 3 is 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1. So this remains as it is. For S3, minus 1 by 3 minus minus 1 by 4 into 13 by 3. So this becomes minus 1 by 3 minus minus plus and this value becomes 13 by 12. So this is 12, 3 4s are 12, so minus 4 plus 13. So this is 9 by 12, which is equal to 3 by 4. So this becomes 3 by 4. For B, 3 multiplied by 13 by 3. And we have to subtract that from 30. So 30 minus 3 multiplied by 13 by 3. So this is 30 minus 13, which is 17. Let me replace this row with the new numbers. Now same thing we have to do for row x2. Here we have to make this number as 0. So 1 by 3 minus 1 into x is equal to 0. 1 by 3 minus x is equal to 0. x is equal to 1 by 3. So this will become 0. 0 multiplied by 1 by 3 is 0 so this will be again 1 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 3 so let's do this 0 minus 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 3 this is equal to minus 1 by 6 minus 1 by 6 now this is 0 and this is also 0 so 0 multiplied by 1 by 3 will be 0 so this remains as it is for S3, 1 by 6 minus minus 1 by 4 multiplied by 1 by 3. So 1 by 6 plus 1 by 12. 12 is the LCM. 6 twos are 12 plus 1. 3 by 12, 1 by 4. So this is 1 by 4. Now for column B, so 10 minus 3 into 1 by 3. So this is 10 minus 1 which is equal to 9. So this becomes 9. So let me replace these numbers with the new numbers. So now we have our new and improved solution. Let's find out whether this is optimal or not. So let's first find out the value of zj. So 20 multiplied by 1 is 20. And 30 multiplied by 0 is 0. So this becomes 20. Again, for x2, we have 30 multiplied by 1, which is 30. For s1, 20 multiplied by 1 by 2, which is 10. So 10. Plus 30 multiplied by minus 1 by 6 which is minus 5 so 10 minus 5 which is 5
20 into 0 is 0, 30 into 0 is 0, 20 into minus 1 by 4 is minus 5, plus 30 into 1 by 4 is 15 by 2, so this becomes minus 10 plus 15 divided by 2, and this is 5 by 2. And 20 multiplied by 3 is 60, plus 30 multiplied by 9 is 270, so this becomes 330. Now let's find Cj minus Ej, so 20 minus 20 is 0, 30 minus 30 is 0, 0 minus 5 is minus 5, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 5 by 2 is minus 5 by 2. So basically the value of Cj minus Zj are either 0 or negative. What this means is that this is the optimal solution. Now let's find out the solution. That means the value of x1 and x2. So x1 is equal to 3, x2 is equal to 9, and the profit is equal to 300 and 30. So basically the manufacturer should make 3 chairs, 9 tables and that is when the profit will be maximized which will be equal to 330 rupees.